Oh, man. Okay, see those wires? That's gotta be a mouse chew right there. Look at that. So the check engine light was on, and uh, being the smart guy that I am, I took that as an indication that perhaps it was time for me to check my engine. This is the first time I've seen the check engine light on. This is a 2012 FJ Cruiser, and you can see it's got just over 150,000 miles on it, so I guess this day has been coming. All right, I'm gonna check out my OBD2 Bluetooth device. This is the OBD Link MX Plus. This is a model MX201. And on the FJ Cruiser, the OBD2 port is just to the left of the hood release. That's right there. It's beneath this cap. And let's see, the flare goes towards the bottom. Okay, that's plugged in. Okay, first I got to select my vehicle, and it was on Venza most recently, so I got to go up here and select, and I know JTEB is my FJ, Toyota FJ Cruiser, that's the one. Oh, I have to turn on the ignition first. Opening communications, interface connected, trying protocols. Let it go through its thing, reading vehicle information. All right, we're up and ready. I want diagnostics. Some functions, blah, blah, blah. I'll only use it when it's in the off. Engine is off, okay. I'm gonna turn off my engine. Turn the ignition to the on. Now I will continue. Now I'm gonna select all, say okay. Current codes is already selected, say okay. And it's thinking about it. All right, camshaft position sensor. I've learned that the track off light activates anytime the check engine light. I'm not sure why that is. So, let's see what we got. Oh man, okay, that didn't take long to figure that out. Good grief, just down in past the oil filler. See those wires? That's a sensor. I'm assuming that's the camshaft position sensor. Where are those wires supposed to be going? Oh. Right there. Huh, that's gotta be a mouse chew right there. Look at that, because if you see all the rest of these sensors, the, the wire loom has electric tape where it transitions out to the wires themselves. And that piece is chewed right back. It's just gone from this. Uh, you can see a little flap here of what's left of the electric tape. But the tapered part is just gone. Let me see if I can pull this lid off here to get a better look at it. Oh, look at that. Those toenail marks all over this. And again up here. Yeah, holy smokes. So that's what I gotta do. I gotta splice that, and that's not gonna be easy. That bugger is tight. Uh, I'm gonna have to pull this little zip tie off to get myself some wiggle room to be able to unwrap that and expose enough of that wire. And this bracket right here, if that wasn't there, I might be able to reach in there enough to be able to get access to that wire enough to do the crimps. And I think all this is doing is supporting this corner of this piece here. So I think I'm going to pull that out of there and see what happens. Yeah, that's going to do it right there. 
Look at there, all of a sudden I can reach that thing. I mean, the wires are wrapped inside the loom as well. All right, so I've got I've got my three wires exposed back far enough that I can deal with them. Now that I have this exposed, I'm going to see if I can get that stripped back enough to be able to put connectors right on that. These are 22 gauge. So it looks like the furthest one out there. All right, those stripped back nicely. And I'm going to use these crimp style heat shrink butt joint connectors. And I'm going to be using my ratcheting crimpers that are the appropriate match for this particular type of a connector. Now one of the downsides to mending such a short piece like this, you can't stagger your uh, connectors along the length of it. Okay, that one caught it. If you don't have a tool like this, you want to get on Amazon and get one. This comes with a kit with several different dies for different types of crimps. But this ratcheting is, uh, this is an excellent choice of a tool for this kind of job. It's the proper tool. As opposed to the old school, uh, these kind you can see the difference. It's just a kind of a little cut out there. I mean, it's better than nothing. So this isn't a bad tool, but this is a better tool. For one thing, it's got a wider bearing surface on your crimp, so you get a wider crimp. And it goes down against hard stops, so you know you've squeezed it far enough when you get handle to handle here. Give it a little tug, make sure it's tight. Now this situation will get a little bit better after I do the heat shrinking, but you can see here that just getting these three things to play well together in such a tight space is not ideal. But we've got a good tight crimp on all of them. We've got some crazy mosquito action going on out here. See, now I've got to strip those ones down in here. There we go. A little pinch, then rotate it, and then off it comes. Oh, the mosquitoes are trying to eat me alive. Bite my forehead while I'm doing this job. <laughs> Okay, this is just a thin sheet of galvanized sheet metal and I'm putting that in just to isolate the heat blast. While that's cooling off, this is the kit that I bought. Five sets of crimping dies and it Worked really well for this job. I just bought it specifically for this job.
seated in. I'm going to show you this tip. This is the zip tie that's standard under the hood of the Toyota. It goes down over that stud in there. It was holding that piece of wire harness. And these sometimes are hard to get them off. And it's sometimes hard to get them back on. Now I've gone to a bigger wire loom and this is probably not going to fit. But the secret about these is you can snip this off right here and run a new zip tie up through that hoop and it'll work just fine. Finger tight. This one goes up top here. And I was really glad that I could accomplish this without taking this whole top end apart. Tighten them down. There we go. All right, that looks done to me. And how do you tell the difference between looks done and is done? The turn of a key. Okay, I've cleared the codes. Ah, oh, sweet. Looks like I cleared them. So I think I'm ready for my 3 a.m. fishing road trip in the morning with at least no old problems. I'm not going to be presumptuous enough to say I shouldn't have any problems tomorrow, but if I do, there'll be new ones. So here's to only having new problems on your next road trip. Thanks a lot for watching. Get a channel out.